ice climbing and highlight is a emotional thing. It's a mental thing. And it's definitely a physical thing. And going packing in Yellowstone, that's starting next summer. Right, bud? No, okay, no, <laughs> he is not gonna do it. There's literally the tire tracks. It went into this wall right here, taking down this fence right here. And we even have a piece of the bumper still left over. A lot of hope and a lot of people very determined to stay peaceful, spread their message. Now this is fast moving water and dangerous. I've seen, I mean, there's a tree going by right there. Branches I've seen all day. A semi overturn carrying a lot of bees uh, recently, and I'm gonna try and show you guys. Okay, they're they're already all over me. It's always helpful to get a little perspective and take it back to a time when schools only had one room. I am standing in a pit that was caused by a ravine of water that went down the side of it. This is the top of the road, and it goes six feet down. And obviously, since the last time you saw me, things have changed, so it's constantly evolving out here. Maybe not getting the exercise that they need or they can take them to the park anyway and just do the best they can to keep them safe with these circumstances. The senior citizens at Brookdale Spring Meadows have seen brighter days. For more than two weeks, the only people walking through these doors are staff. They haven't been able to see loved ones in person or participate in their daily activities. Wednesday, they got a special surprise. Would you mind if I played you a song really quick? The days have been dark for Dane Andrew Thompson too. Like many people, he's been hit hard when it comes to his regular employment. We work at the Hofbrau and the Rialto, and so I'm the definition of non-essential. Wednesday, his presence was essential, even if just for a song. Show people that music's still out there for them. They need it. Windows slid open and blinds were pulled back. Time to let a little light and sound in at Brookdale Spring Meadows. From one window to the next. Oh, y'all, let's go in there. If I stayed away too long. Would you mind if I played a song for you really quick? All right, cool, because I like playing for cute girls, so. Thompson using music to get through a tough time. Hopefully through all this, people just realize that it's the arts that are helping get people through all this, like when we're alone and sequestered and whatnot. Inside, the residents have felt alone. Wednesday was different. They cried and smiled listening to Thompson play. You just go ahead and play whatever you like. You know, it's a way to feel like someone else is out there for you. And, uh, you know, whether it's through songs, paintings, or writing. It's uh, just a way to feel connected when we're not. And as he plays for the residents here, he's thinking about another senior citizen in another state. I have a grandmother out in Cedro Woolley, Washington, that's in a place very similar to this. And I know that uh, she would be giggling her face off if she saw somebody like me come and play music for him. It's what drives him to do good, even if just for a song. And a mushroom twist with french fries. Yeah, we're good. They have no burger left, huh? Okay piece of Main Street America is missing tonight. And the owner of the Stockman Bar, which is empty right now, might normally be full to the brim. She says that's representative of the many small town businesses around the country that are suffering through this pandemic. Tonight is the Stockman's second to last night of business. I love you guys. Love you Their phone has been ringing off the hook all day. Mary Weimer started the Stockman with her husband 32 years ago. This, this is kind of a homecoming place when people come back from, from school or graduation or Christmas or Easter breaks. They come back and their families come in here. She now runs it with her daughter. I don't know what to tell you, Mama. When the pandemic started, Mary didn't doubt they'd make it through. They just dug deeper, putting in new floors, polishing the historic wooden bar, and buying new bar sinks. But the closures and stay-at-home orders just kept coming. At some point, the numbers didn't add up. Last Tuesday, Mary made the heartbreaking decision to close down the business that had been the last three decades of her life. Since she announced the Stockman's closure on Monday, she's seen an outpouring of support in person and on social media. This is like the 4th of July parade day on steroids. Yes! They've been so compassionate and, you know, I, I knew it was going to be a big deal. I didn't think it was going to be a big deal. <laughs> I mean, it's, the last few days have been full of emotion. Rachel has been so overwhelming, I just, I can't comprehend at all. Uh, I never thought I'd be in a position like this. But even with all the support over the last week, Mary says at her age and with the current phase restrictions in place, there's no way they could stay on their feet. I guess I love the place so much. You know, I, I do, and I love the people who love it. And uh, it's been my life for 32 years. 
the best town with the best people, the best hearted people, the best giving people. And I would I wouldn't change one thing ever, ever. In Livingston, Rachel Louise Just, Montana right now. Roxy Marquardt is working her way through the ninth week of e-learning. But by now, she's found a routine. I open up my computer, what is on the agenda for today? What do I need to post to Google Classroom? You know, what do I need to have ready for this next video? Marquardt is trying to adjust to distance learning, like thousands of teachers across the country. Yep, 14 and 15. My day just consists of, you know, staring at kids through a computer screen. <laughs> but her day doesn't look like other teachers. Her school is smaller than a tennis court and serves just 13 students K through 8th grade. Marquardt doesn't have a tech person, and there's no principal or team of strategists. She and teacher's aide Skyla Chipra had to figure out how to teach through a pandemic all on their own. Steady Eddie, what did he do? When your school is just a couple hundred square feet in size, problem solving looks a little bit different. If something's not working, sometimes I'll like call my sister and see if it'll work with her first before I try it with the kids just to see. Nice, Lily. Good job. They meet with the kids twice a day, and each grade gets a half hour lesson. Now, remember because we say hour no. for OW. School mascot Xena is long for the ride. Unlike in other rural schools, luckily all of these students have internet access. <laughs> oh my goodness, Liam's got moose horns. And Mark Hort says there's some advantages to her situation. We're unique in that we can engage with the kids one-on-one. -on -one. They're kind of used to working on their own. But they're not used to being away from classmates that feel like family members. It's just different because you don't get to play with them at recess and just different. And most of those students can't wait to go back. It's a super fun school. It's Everything's fun now. <laughs> In Bozeman, Rachel Louise, just Montana right now.